Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so when I go to this document that we see right here, there's a couple things that uh, you might want to do uh, maybe next time before you go into Compass, but there's going to be something that you're always, if you reach out to Help Desk and it's something that is uh, you're looking for um, updated class, they may say that one, have you updated Chrome? Two, have you updated your Windows? And what that means is if, if you have a, um, a laptop device, a, a Mac that you're working off of, um, Chromebook still updating Chrome, Please make sure that you know we shut that down and we look for updates as often um, as you can. Oh, sorry, you can see that uh, being called on uh, Hangouts as well. I'm just gonna have to shut that down as well. Alrighty, there we go. Sorry about that. And uh, so basically, uh, there are some things that we need to do with our computer before. One is shut it down, open it up, make sure Chrome has updated. And up at the top of this doc, there is a little um, OCSB how-to videos on how do you find updates and how do you clear your cache. You may hear from us, um, please clear your cache before your cache before you go into, um, into Compass. So in this moment in time, uh, you may not be able to do it, but um, if you notice something might be a bit off from it, um, it doesn't hurt to do these items uh, on a regular basis so that uh, we do. So these are recommended from Compass, not just uh, LT department. So um, the other thing would be was that um, to keep in mind, if we had Compass open, um, as we go through these examples about how do we input um, comments and, and marks into our uh, Compass uh, software, that just keep in mind, just like uh, any other software, it's good to start with a fresh session, meaning that um, unlike uh, banking, where you kind of go away for 10 minutes and it kind of shuts off, uh, with Compass, it might kind of look like it's still open but if i if i was doing work and came back two hours later it's always good to log out and log back in or change a page um, or a, a subject like i'm about to show you just so that you know you're always in a fresh uh, session so please uh, make sure you're doing that and then um, at the bottom when we're in we'll talk about different support options for you the slide deck that I i'm going to refer to is this slide deck right here and it's highlighted in yellow that the ones that i'm highlighting right now and when I click on it, it will be a slide deck that comes up in present mode. And as I sort of click through the next couple slides, you can see here are some updates that we'll kind of speak about today regarding kindergarten and the math uh, entry point. And then here's the technical issues that I kind of referred to. And there's a chat box in Compass that I'll, I'll, I'll show you. And then here is just a little table of contents. So you can see we're obviously focused on kindergarten and reporting period one and grade one to six and reporting period one. So if I wanted kindergarten or grade one to six and I clicked on reporting period one, it would bring me right to that uh, bookmarked page. Um, and then of course, as I look at the slides at the bottom, you can just navigate um, through there as well if you lose that table of contents. So it's a bit more tricky there, but you can at least get back to the uh, table of contents to reset yourself on that, uh, on that standpoint. Okay, um, so just that's, that's a, so all these videos in here, if I keep on going along, are micro learning videos, um, such as um, how do we navigate the Compass dashboard? They're all about minute or two or three minute videos that uh, kind of consolidate what we're talking about this. How do we increase the font size? What does it mean for your Google Doc and comment bank and so forth? How do you save? So a lot of these things may be uh, slight, uh, straying slightly from what we need to do today, but it's, it's in there um, and they're short videos because we realize your time is, um, is precious. Okay, so the other thing that we need to know is that this is where you've probably clicked. This is the actual link to uh, Compass to be able to log in. When you go to log in, you will um, see a Microsoft login pop up and it is still your OCSB.ca um, Google password and, um, and uh, sorry, username and password. And from that standpoint, you would, um, it's, it's called our unified password. So it's, uh, it will allow us to get into, into Compass and see what you uh, need to see. And for today, I'm not going to click on this one specifically in login because I don't have any students in, in Power Teacher. I have, uh, I'll be showing you some items in a, um, a sandbox account. A sandbox is something you play in. So I've already opened it up, but I'm not in my actual, you know, my actual live uh, account because uh, of those factors. So when you click on this, you would sign in, you go to what you need to do. 
uh, on that page. And remember, you may be following along now, but maybe you haven't uh, ensured you, you've cleared your cache and, and updated Chrome and so forth. So just make sure that that's something uh, you consider moving forward, but you may not do just in this, in this moment of time, or maybe you are. So I'm going to click on that. And then uh, imagine that I'm clicking on this. If I do click on it, it will say, oh, let's see if I, I'll click on it, see what it shows you. It just, it brings me to a sign in and you can see that, um, that in this case, um, it's just a sign in similar to like, if we were getting into um, some of our other softwares that uh, we use in human resources and so forth, uh, such as our AT and getting into those other options. So when we log in, now we're kind of getting to the crux of why you are here. This is what it might be when we when we log in. I'm just resetting myself because uh, I uh, clicked on it before. Let's see. So when we come in, see there's a little slight delay. Uh, across the top, you see that it shows my school uh, name. In this case, you might only see your um, your own teacher name. The reason why I see a school name is there because you might. Um, you actually might, if you're a brick and mortar teacher, if you're teaching in the schools and you have two kind of, you split between schools, you might have to toggle between those two schools. And in that case, I have a couple of schools that I would toggle in between in here in this sandbox account. But typically, um, whether you're virtual, you would have that one school. And uh, depending on um, your assignment, uh, you might have two schools. But in a lot of cases, it's just the one. So you might just see your name at the top. So that's um, a couple of things that we're looking at. So you one is, like I said, we need to be able to access it. And so if you've already, if you've hit a stumble being able to get into this point, of course, put in a help desk ticket so that we can ensure that um, you're able to get in. The other component is that it does pull data from uh, PowerSchool. So that's the data that's input by uh, at the school level. Um, so you need to be the lead teacher on courses. You need to be in PowerSchool as such to make sure that uh, your schedule reflects because Compass is just pulling that information. So if there's any issues from that regard, um, please make sure to put in a help desk ticket. And those are prioritized from our help desk ticket, our help desk team, because access is, um, is key to all this, of course. We know that. So as I go down the left-hand side, you can see that I have classes. And then in here, you might only just see a homeroom. In this case, I see multiple um, homerooms uh, from that standpoint. And you can see that in this case, I've, uh, uh, I'm gonna just pull out and, and, and reset because I need to come up into a sandbox account. So I'm actually showing it as a, a sandbox principle so that um, I will uh, reset myself and just bring myself into uh, an elementary teacher view. So because I have so many accounts, I need to properly log in. So I'm going to do that while, um, while I talk right now. And just to make sure that we have the most proper um, account for us to, to look into. So sorry about that. Just gonna give us a few seconds for me to log out and, and re-sign back in. All right, just so as I'm doing that, there is there's some questions and there should be some information going out from our student success department. Um, if you are a teacher in uh, kindergarten, there was uh, a feature request that kind of mimicked uh, the template from last year. If you weren't uh, teaching last year, and uh, this may not be a comparable, but uh, for the four frames in kindergarten, um, it's showing up as a 500 character maximum. There is a, uh, it should, to, as of tomorrow, there should be an increase to the um, temp ministry template of a thousand characters per frame. And uh, for our religion comment, this is a one to six um, component that uh, right before I was showing as a maximum of three lines. Um, which was not the equivalent of last year, five lines, which is uh, the equivalent of, um, of five, uh, sorry, 400 characters, which is what we're used to. So that, those should all be uh, live tomorrow. If you are a math teacher in grade one to six, you um, will see that you are able to input the new one mark uh, according to the ministry release of template. But if you go to print preview at the moment, you may not see that the template in when you go to see that. Well, I'll show you the example on here. You may not see it in your when you go to print preview the report card on the template until tomorrow. So that's that's the goal for that. So in one to, in kindergarten comments, uh, character length increase tomorrow in math um, increase. Uh, you'll be able to see the template for the mark. You should be able to input it. And then for religion, it should be 400 characters uh, tomorrow as well. All right, so I think I've reset myself. Sorry about that. 
and I'll just pull it into view so that you can see that. There we go. All right, so there we go. So now I'm in a teacher view. Apologize for that. It just caught me by logging in and it just defaulted to a different account I was just in. Okay, so you can see right at the top, it does say St. Michael Fitzroy. And in these classes are, are uh, again, fake classes. They are, have anonymized data. So you will see that I shouldn't be able to see some of the, the student information. On the left-hand side, I see my the homerooms that I have associated with it. And then um, as I scroll back uh, below that, there is the grade book component. So regardless of whether I'm a kindergarten teacher or um, a one to six teacher, and regardless of subject, um, I'm going to expand the uh, grade book and you can see at the top it's also expanded it's also closed up the classes but that might be important if I need to, to click on a specific homeroom to toggle myself into that so uh, depending on how it's how it's set up down below here um, this is where for those that are here for a refresher or if you're completely new to it this is where people would have input the progress report um, and this is not a progress report time in um in our k and obviously a uh, there was no progress reports at all you have you kind of have a, an, a, a communication of learning at that time and then in the fall obviously for one to six we had progress and in that uh, section for this is for one to six i'll start with one to six and uh, a lot of the uh the similar workflows are um something that will present itself now as you would if you were um in jk and sk but you can see below that's where if you want to sort of click around that's where jk and sk report card is and i'll come back to that in just in just a, a few moments in time for reporting term one there is no longer a single area such as progress report card and you may not see it on there but either way you wouldn't be able to update it outside of that reporting time period you have comments and learning skills if I click on comments, I'll start there. And this is again for um, grade one to six. Um, I'm just gonna let you, show you kind of what we see. And you can see at the, at the top that I'm always going to verify that I'm in reporting period one. If I click on it, you should have the option between one and two. It's good that will default to one. And it usually defaults here to alphabetical, which is dance and so forth um, in, this, in this case. Um, what you look at. You will see that uh, on the left hand side that it's defaulted to 3, 4, which is okay for me. But if you needed to change a class specifically, um, expanding classes and then clicking on it. In this case, I know we're not in a 7 and 8, but if I clicked on 7 and 8, you could see that it, it would toggle between the classes. So I will go back to 3 to 4, but just to show you that if you did have a couple classes there, that's how you would toggle through the class and this here, the drop down would be how you toggle through um, the uh, courses that are subjects that you teach. Now, being a sandbox account, typically if you're a French teacher, you would have maybe social studies with there. You wouldn't see all these, um, all the subjects on that drop down. You would only see the subjects that you currently teach. Um, so don't be alarmed when you see all of those. Um, you shouldn't see them on yours. Uh, if I'm an extended teacher and junior, then of course I'm going to see the subjects that I need to see and vice versa, all those scenarios that we talk about um, based on those if I'm a grade two teacher. So it should you should be able to see those uh, courses that you teach. So I'm going to, uh, maybe I'm going to uh, see if I can jump over to, uh, maybe I'll switch over. So in my sandbox right now, I don't, I think I've flipped over to, yeah, there's the math. So you don't see it today yourself. You should see it tomorrow, but this is kind of a, a little bit of a, a preview of what it would look like for the uh, math mark. And I know you've had some support at the, the school level on, on your staff meetings with a slide deck and, and leadership from your administration about uh, that transition from stu our student success department. But you can see that there's no longer five strands here. So in math, it would just be that communication uh, of learning on on that math. But no matter what um, what subject you teach, the concept is the same here. So up at, up at the top, um, we're looking across, the, there's these blue buttons here, which is not applicable, um, IEP and ESL. And um, we have heard that potentially in language and math it's there, but in science it wasn't there. And I can't determine if it was um, just for one person or more, but uh, Compass is aware that um, uh, of, of that issue on that one person. So if it's affecting you, it is something that LT is, is aware of. But um, with uh, 
with the students, um, in this case, uh, this being a, a, a math class in, in, in a grade three, four class, if I'm coming in here to do my report card, so let's let's keep it simple now, is that I can go in and of course I can, if I know this student um, is on an IEP for modifications and so forth, and you've gone through the documentation, cons, uh, you know, uh, conferred with your resource uh, teacher and your admin. So my job today is not to tell you when and where to click all these boxes. It's just that you can. Um, so if this student was in need to have this box checked, I could. Uh, click on it if they were English language learner and they were on a step and this was should have been, this should be checked based on the parameters of those steps and programs and recommendations you could click it um, if I had multiple students that if I knew this this student and this student this is kind of like a select all feature for these blue boxes so just for these blue boxes and for future if all these students here if all these or maybe I'll make my screen a bit bigger for you sorry Hopefully that's a bit better. If I select those four students and then I click on the IEP box up here, they will all highlight. So it, it saves a bit of time. Um, then I always click this one and I kind of select all and then I select off and I deselect, just kind of reset myself. And the same thing I could do with uh, with ESL. And uh, but I could also just do it just do it manually. So that's all the, that um, and the NA is. Uh, based on uh, different parameters as well. So those those first three boxes here um, are uh, you can do manually. There is a French box here, and because math isn't typically taught in French in this class that I'm signed up for in this three four class, we are working um, obviously with uh, our French uh, uh, consultants at the elementary level, so Emily, and then with um, with Power School because uh, they should pick up automatically from the flags that are in power school so they should be checked off if it's a french if it's a, a subject taught in french it should automatically be done if it's not and you can do it the recommendation currently from amelie and from from us is to just check those boxes um, and then communicate that to your admin team so that we can follow up on it uh, and we just can be aware that it's not happening automatically in some cases at progress report time earlier on in the in the fall, um, that was the case. Most people had to manually do it, um, so we just wanted to make sure that that's the case. All right. So then for the mark. So in this case, um, I'm in math, and there's a couple things that I can do. And in this case, I'm just you know, I could type in B. Um, you see that there is color codes. If I type in that one, I can hit enter. Even if I put a lowercase, and then I'm kind of here. Tabbing does goes left to right. It doesn't really solve. So I am kind of clicking up and down. Your workflow is your workflow. So how you go through this is totally up to you. Um, you might want to do it by students. You might want to do it all the marks. You can see if I put a, a C in there, um, it's got a different color. If I put an A in there, it's got a different color. Um, and then uh, it just, uh, the colors, uh, you know, I think there's a red if it gets really thin, but I don't think they mean too much other than visually uh, to the eye. The other component here is that um, if I come in, I've put a mark. So let's let's again reset ourselves. I see that that one's highlighted. I've come in. I've ensured if they have an, uh, if they need the IEP checkbox checked because of modifications or requirements, it is ESL. And then the mark I put in the mark here um, is a, is the next step for this. Is there's a comment associated with this uh, with this child with this student? And of course, you can you can just uh, start uh, typing. Um, and you can see that something popped up at the bottom. Um, and uh, it was kind of like a print uh, preview, like a preview box of a comment that I've already saved to my um, comment bank. So if we get time, I'll talk about the comment bank a little bit um, because it is helpful. But for the purpose of today, if you're just, if you're coming in to say, well, how do I get a comment in there? You could just start typing. Um, but there is also, um, when we went to use this program, we also did a survey of a staff and we had about five or 600 people respond and about 85 or 90% of the people um, were using Google Docs at the, at the moment. So I'm gonna show you an example of what it means in, in Google Doc to use this. And it shows 15 lines remaining. Uh, we've asked Compass to uh, change that so we're, it's, a, it's aware of characters. I talked about characters already. Um, our understanding and testing is about one, it's not about lines, um, on this on this page, it's not about lines on a Google Doc. It's actually about lines on the template, the report card template. So, whether I uh, shrink this up uh, smaller, um, and I still, you can still see that it's actually only 15 lines um, that remains. 
And we believe one line is almost the equivalent of about 80, 80 characters. Um, in the math, I think it's uh, almost close to 850 characters, if I'm not wrong. It's definitely down a bit from the when it was five strands. So we'll have to be aware, uh, aware of that uh, as well. But right here, I can start typing. But as we do know, we also have a um, uh, Google Docs that a lot of people are using. So I'm going to show you how I would uh, copy and paste a little bit. Um, and then I'll pause for a little bit of questions, because right now I'm only talking about how do I enter um, some comments. And then I'll show the, the kindergarten one. And I won't do um, the learning skills yet at, at one to one to six. I don't want to jump around too quickly. I'll answer some questions. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a Google Doc that I have for the purposes of today. Oh, and before I do that, I want you to notice that because I clicked off the screen, um, uh, I was going to click off it later and highlight and highlight it, but you can see that it, it turned green. Green is good because when I clicked in here and I added um, some some text, and then when I clicked off, you can see that it turned green. Green is good. The whole row turned green, not the box itself, but the row around it. That means it's saving, so that's good. Um, we'd also recommend that uh, if you are are logging in, and you, I wouldn't do your whole uh, reports. I might put in. Um, a comment or a mark, and then I might flip out of math to music, let it load, and I might go back to math just to say, okay, it's saved. That's good because you know what? It's not good for anybody. It's not specific to Compass. We've all had it when we've worked on Word documents and things where you get things to go to submit, and then all of a sudden it, your work is, is not there. So it does save in real time, um, but uh, just be extra cautious. You put a mark or two in there. Flip off, flip back on, make sure everything is saving correctly before you do uh, 25, 30 uh, comments and marks, just to be extra careful. But it shouldn't be an issue, but uh, it doesn't hurt to, uh, to triple check on that. So here's my Google Doc before we go too much further. Um, if you, uh, this was a comparable before. On the slide deck, we used to have different um, chevrons, like first name and so forth. Um, if you're completely new to Compass, that means nothing. Uh, if you haven't used our, our Power Teacher uh, gradebook before, so this was last year. So um, if you have never used it, you don't need to think twice about what I'm speaking of right now. But you may have comments that also have what is currently in there. And uh, this is an example of just a, a comment. So I'm going to show that I can copy and paste it. And then if you do have a comment bank from years previous, I'm going to show you a little bit of a resource on how you can find and replace all of those um, in there for yourself. But for now, all I'm doing is copying. I'm going back to my gradebook. And you can see that in here, I can click on that. And then I can click off. The one thing it doesn't do right now, and that's where kind of clicking it back and forth, you can see that the uh, the shortcut keys has not changed on this one uh, right now. And so I'm going to click off of um, math to music and then go back to, to math. Compass is aware of this. You can see that it now says E and all these asterisks. Well, I won't say that for you, but you can see that over here, that's actually the sort of hidden name of this sandbox child um, in this case that shows it up. And you can also see that the other ones now say she and uh, and so forth. And so when I put that in there, you can you can copy and paste um, into um, these text boxes, and you are able to uh, to do that. And so I can do that uh, independently, or um, I can go through and select three, four, five children. If this is my base starting comment, and instead of clicking in here. Um, to add it to these four or five students that I uh, selected, I can go up to a pen comment. I can then paste in here. And then I can say apply to student. And actually should just say apply to students in this case, because you actually will um, uh, do that. Apply to student, but it is individual students selected. So you can see that um, this one, the ones that I selected have all added that comment. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did press Control C and V in that case, but you can um, you can also right click and, and do the same options. I've tested both. Good question. So the cop the question in the chat was, could how did I copy and paste? So uh, I did copy and paste by Control C and V. I found that works for for me in this program. And so I'm just going to reset everything, and uh, and then kind of look at what I have here. Uh, a pen comment is truly a penned comment, so it means that even if I choose this student again. Uh, students again, and I add more comments, it's not going to replace what's there. 
um, it's going to add on to the comment that's already there for you to be able to do this. So if I was in uh, my, my uh, comment bank again, I'm control C, yep. Uh, and then and I go back to the, the book. So if I had this student and this student that needed that comment, you can see that they already have some text in there. And if I go to a pen comment, and this is again, not if I'm not doing it one by one, and then if I apply to student, it's actually added on to those um, students in that case. So you can do it individually. Um, you can just type in the text box over and fill out those 15 lines. You can um, add a base, base comment and just copy and paste uh, from text box to text box. Or you can select all and kind of start appending uh, comments in there as well. So that's, that's a comment. And that's very similar as we go through in language. You can see it's going to look a bit different. Because, uh, yeah, you can see that I was just uh, showing you some <laughs> uh, how much in the text box. In this case, it looks a bit different, uh, than, but the text box is the same. But uh, by student, the IP, the ESL, and the marks for reading, writing, media, literacy, and oral communication. So in that case, I could tab across and, and hit it. But um, it's going to be um, specific to those those comments and then before i pause uh, for for questions just on inputting a mark not into kindergarten yet um, uh, i'll take some questions but then if i go into um, visual arts you're going to say that there's actually in this box there's 12 lines and if you are uh, reporting on two of them um, as kind of directed in a lot of cases um, how many it is that you're reporting on for this report then um these boxes like the arts and health and phys ed are shared lines so you don't get 12 lines for the arts you get 12 lines for the arts and the other uh, visual art uh, or the other arts subject maybe it's music or it's uh, dance but the other the other subjects that you have in here you you will have the comment um you will have a comment in there that you, maybe you didn't report on it this term um, so you, if it's drama, you did not evaluate this term, that's going to take out probably one line of those 12 because you put in that comment saying it was not evaluated. Um, and then that you put in the NA that would be associated with that. So it is for things like uh, phys ed and for health and for the arts, it is a communal uh, 12 lines. Or um, if I'm in physical education, I think it's still 12 lines, but uh, 13. So 13 between health and phys ed. So it's communal. Everything else is separate. Whereas on the progress report, it was all in together in one in one box. Um, there was a question I think that popped in. I'll go back to um, uh, to health and uh, sorry, I was in math. The question was, can I bulk delete? Uh, no, not so easy right now to bulk delete on that same piece. Um, uh, that was the question is, could I append comment and then kind of, uh, no, everything kind of goes over. So it is kind of a um, go box by box and then just, um, I, there is ways in which I don't have to click and highlight. I can just actually use a shortcut key to highlight out and then click backspace. But there isn't a perfect scenario where if I realized everything um, needed to be deleted, it would be more of a, a short-term pain for long-term gain uh, approach. Good question. On the So just before, I guess uh, maybe I'll contradict myself, and I'm just going to click on the JKSK report card just for the comment component. I'll have to look at it off the my tired brain right now in terms of the shortcut key for highlight all. I know it's there, but it's um, uh, just at the end of the day and didn't have my third coffee, I think. So uh, maybe if somebody knows right off the top, they can throw it in. Um, so in here, you can see um, for uh, it looks a bit different when I'm in a, a kindergarten view. Of course, I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm in the proper reporting period. Um, in this case, uh, it didn't, uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing up as blank, but, uh, and then immersion. Um, in this case, uh, it should show up as an immersion because our programs in, in kindergarten are immersion. We found that if it showed up as core for something, for some reason, uh, we clicked on immersion, clicked on apply to all. And then I kind of clicked on a text box and I pressed, I kind of pressed and I, I put a letter and I kind of brought it back. And then I kind of finished. I, it said comment save. So it said comment save. The whole box didn't show up. The comment save showed up there um, at that time. So you can see as I moved it around, um, even if I didn't put anything in the text box, uh, just make sure that um, it can be done. The uh, the administrator, your principal, can also do this on their end if it was past the reporting 
period. Um, but for you, you could just apply immersion to all. But again, just like the FSL checkbox in one to six, um, it should automatically do so um, from PowerScope. But just in case you see that, um, just uh, keep a, keep an eye on it. In the um, uh, religious and family life education, even though it says it right, uh, religious and family life education is perfect right there for you. You have 400, uh, I think it was, uh, how many, as I started typing, uh, it was kind of, it was a lot and everything had a thousand characters in there. I think it was typically four or 500 in there for, um, uh, for the K program. But I think because these ones in my sandbox right now are a thousand characters, um, I think it also made this one a thousand characters. So we'll see how that goes. I think there will be a lot less um, in there compared to normal. So we'll see uh, how it is. If there's no bulk fill um, for all students, it's a different viewpoint. We've asked why it can't be very similar. But uh, if a student was uh, ESL uh, had a, uh, uh, was an English language learner, you could click it off. And if they did have an IP, you could click it off. So it's it's uh, based on just that per student. And then it's just a, either a copy and paste for some starter uh, comment banks um, or what you had in Google Doc as you prepared it there. And you just put it in here um, in the same uh, component for that, for, for um, the comments at the uh, kindergarten level. All right, so right now, um, all I've done is comments. Um, at, obviously at the kindergarten piece, there is no mark uh, associated with it. That's why I just kept it about comments for now. I'll go back and talk about the marks at the uh, at the one to six level in just a, a few moments. And then we'll kind of talk about um, how do we kind of sign this off and let our principal know that uh, we're, we're okay. And at the kindergarten lo level, there isn't really that sign off uh, component uh, worked into their software yet. So we'll, we'll go from there. So I'll see if, if there's um, an opportunity for uh, hands up or I've been trying to catch the chats on the side. If you want to uh, ask just about uh, strictly um, going in regarding uh, comments, either typing, copying and pasting. I will show just while we're that in the uh, Compass Writing Tool document, you'll see me kind of click a couple times. This is the one that's linked on the um, off of the staff portal that I showed you. And uh, as I go through, I mentioned, sorry for clicking too quickly. Uh, Navigate, it's coming up, my apologies. There we go. So in here, if you did have a Google Doc, this was one that it did talk about how do I uh, uh, change my other short shortcut keys, like Chevron first name, if you did use the old Power Teacher Gradebook um, into the, the new um, items in here. There's also a way to save these into a, um, uh, into your little, let's see the comment bank that sorry i clicked on the wrong one uh, into the comment bank and in here there's a the ability to save a comment to a comment bank here and the ability to sort them and when you're in uh comments at the uh one to six level you can either create comments up here or if i wanted to save this comment here i could add it to a comment bank uh, via this regard or i could expand it up here and then uh, save it to a comment bank. And what it allows me to do is I can actually uh, create categories. Like it could be math, it could be um, number sense. And if I click that, I can choose that this would be, and these I've created before. So it might be math, it might be mathematics. Some of them are pre-populated. I can choose that this is reporting period one. I can choose that this is grade five, and then I can click apply. And so then later on, if I wanted to come in even this year or next, um, and I wanted to show all, I could just show all my math comments and you can see that this is grade five. I'm just doing stuff that I could save uh, comments to a comment bank, but I don't want to make it overly complicated for you today because um, you can see that just about the, um, the way you come in and the way you are able to access the class and put in your, your comments, that's what we need for uh, today. I see a comment about missing classes. Definitely it's a help desk ticket because it could be a, a data between PowerSchool, how it's inputted, uh, being lead teacher. And sometimes uh, sometimes there's just uh, different circumstances. So definitely a help desk ticket to make sure that the classes are there. Um, so for help desk on the um, staff portal, I'll just refer back to that, is the uh, little um, emoji, um, you know, with the headset on, you click on it, you actually use your e employee number and the password to, to log in uh, to that. And you could just say I'm have, uh, I can access compass, but I'm missing classes, 
can please help basically be as specific as you as you can so we can narrow it down it also wouldn't hurt to touch base with your office administrator as, attached to um, your school whether virtual or not because uh, we need that's where it's pulling the data from so it needs to make sure that you're uh, the prime on those classes uh, to be able uh, to do that but yeah definitely making sure it's there is is key all right I don't think I'm missing. Yeah, I'm still not remembering the shortcut key to highlight at that uh, at the moment in time, but I'll probably remember towards the end of the call. I do apologize. All right, so I'm going to go back um, to the uh, learning skills. Well, I go back. I did talk about marks. I should say I was uh, mixing my. I'm just going to comments and I did do the mark component I should uh, go back there so just that was just the B's and going down and, and so you can just put the letter you can put C in it and hit enter so in that whether it's that or math um, we've covered that so then the one thing that we do need to look at is is the learning schools control plus say yeah I so perfect and sometimes it's different between Windows and, and Chrome but it should be consistent on how you set up so that's why uh, maybe that's why I'm my memory is not serving you well Okay, so here is the learning skills. So associated with the homeroom teacher in um, I'm in the grade three, four view. And so obviously there's uh, this is grade one to one to six. Um, as always, uh, we have the option to select all. And the select all feature is nice in some components. So um, you can do so by um, I'm just going to reset because this one um, I do share the sandbox account with my LT colleagues. Um, so I could say, okay, this child is, uh, you know, based on my uh, observations and, and the work we've done on these uh, learning skills, that generally um, they are across the good. I could start there, but I know that in responsibility, I could go in, they could be excellent, and in collaboration or initiative, they're uh, satisfactory. So you could bulk fill all of them, or you could just go in across here, drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down drop down and I think you get the picture. Um, I can also go in here and then I can press N, I'm typing it and I'm tabbing across. So G and um, S and N and uh, G and E. So there's a lot of workflows for you. Um, you could also, um, if you know you're gonna go in and change them, you could bulk select everybody and, and, and click on excellent because no doubt um, this is the, uh, the best class you've ever, ever had and never will have. Everybody is excellent. And um, that's the work you have to do for this. Um, I say that because I know that as good as our, our classes are, that it may not be representative of what your evaluation of their learning skills are right now. So um, if that's the case, I would click on none and reset myself and just go through those options. So in this case, reset. Um, I'll just put that in there for good and then kind of um, for this student, uh, maybe it was like that, I think I had. And of course, here's our, our text. So you can use the append comment, you can type, you can uh, copy and paste from a doc. So in that space, the uh, the learning skills are, are very similar to writing a uh, comment in a subject-based area at the one to six level, because uh, we're familiar with, with those items. Make sure you're in reporting period one. And then sometimes, uh, because there's so much data flowing people in and out of virtual to, uh, they went to virtual or the, in January they came back from virtual. Um, sometimes we might have to show the inactive students, but typically it should be defaulted off. You may once in a blue moon be asked to look to see if somebody, uh, one of your students was there, but uh, it's not really, uh, it, you should have a class that is reflective of yours um, in, in that moment of time. And I know um, I said I was going to refer to it earlier. If you had a student that was, that was lagging on that shouldn't be there, or you had questions in the moment about how to use Compass, not about missing classes, but there is this nice uh, chat box on the side there. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, you, you can put in uh, a message in there regarding assessment or, or some, this application and you can say, well, I'm having trouble with do doing this and they do have a um, they do have a support line during the working hours that are there. Um, and if not, uh, if it's after hours, you can kind of leave a message and they will will do that. Okay, so I'll pause there. So right now, up to now we've we've covered kind of getting in putting comments in, uh, making sure that there's a mark associated with those comments. We have, we're currently on the learning skills for uh, grades one to six, uh, very similar workflow for the comments. And then um, just a, some kind of streamlining of how to use um, 
the blue bars across the top if you wanted to bulk fill. And you can see that as I click and I put in text when I um, typing, I click off, you can see that the, the in this case, in the learning skills, it's only this, it's not the everything that turns green. But again, remind yourself to do a uh, do one or two, click off, go somewhere else, come back, make sure it's turning green uh, before you do before you do everything. We'll see if there's some more comments before I show how you kind of finalize uh, the process for yourself as you get into the reporting. Um, if you're if uh, just like if you're missing a class, if something doesn't look right or you're missing um, who your lead teacher on, definitely um, touch base with your with your OA and put in a help desk ticket if it doesn't look like you're uh, connected um, uh, that piece. Um, so bulk fill, fill a comment I have on the side. So I'll go back um, to, I'm assuming the comment in here. And so basically, I'll, I think I still, I'll go back here and uh, maybe I'll go back to the, yeah, just to the math because we had that before. So the, the question is, how do I bulk fill a comment? So I have a comment. Um, if you are doing it sort of off the cuff, you can select all of them on the left hand side and you could go to a pen comment and you could say i'm this is not what you're going to write i'm um uh modeling how to append a comment so in this case i can type it in after this is after i've selected the all the students and then i can click apply to student and you can see that now it's added it on so if it was empty it added on to empty and if it's here it's added on to the ones that are currently in there everything's turned green that's nice if I, I want to copy and paste like a starter, like this is what we're focusing on for this term, I've select, again, I'm going to select all, append comment. I'm going to put um, uh, the, the comment that I need or anything, and this is just an example. Put it in there, apply to the student, and it's going to add it on to all the students. So it's based on how I've selected on the side, the bulk fill. So I'm going to deselect all, but that's how you would bulk fill a comment, and it's the same for um in the in the learning skills because you can kind of uh select all the students and then append comments so if you you know the first sentence was about the, the theme that we had for our school board and what we focused on um for this term in terms of uh our learning skills then you could definitely put a first liner that uh, across everybody by appending comment when everybody is selected and then then you would go and individualize the the comment after that all right. So I think I'm going to pause there because the last piece is going to how, how are we kind of finishing off the process by uh, by communication with your school administrator. Um, so that's right now in terms of we could go deeper into the comment bank, um, but in terms of just uh, individually typing in or um, just uh, copying and pasting for one student or many students and adding in marks. Um, that is essentially, as long as you can get in and see the classes that you need to see, of course, um, clicking on report card and then comments and learning skills on the side, um, that's one piece. And now I'm gonna go through kind of how you would um, review and kind of look at um, at the JK level, just kind of see, one people wanna see their, um, uh, how far they've con kind of gotten at that point. So I'm gonna click on a couple settings that we have in here and you'll still notice that there's two areas that are different related to um, JKSK and to report card. So one of them is report card export. And this is for one to six. Um, what I really like about that is that um, when I come in um, at, uh, I wanna make sure that I'm in reporting period one I'm just going to click these off because there's a couple of things that I need to see. We, we model this so often that sometimes we forget to uncheck. But what this is showing you here on under report card export um, is that in this homeroom under dance, and maybe if I go to math, you can see that math, the marks that I put in, I did not complete them all. I only bit, went about a quarter uh, down that page, and it actually is pretty representative. So it gives me like a little thermometer approach that um, I do have marks in those, uh, but I am missing you know, about three quarters of them. In the subject comments, because I bulk filled, it's actually showing me that I've actually have comments in all those boxes, except for it doesn't tell me how good those comments are or if it's if it's anything more than just uh, a couple of characters. So um, it, it does, it's not foolproof, but it does tell you on a, a quick glance of what you 
you can see. So it is helpful when you want to say, oh, I'm going through, I feel like I'm doing well. I know that uh, when I, I keep on modeling it, I can only imagine, you know, this is great when I see 100% across one. Um, so that's all that's telling you. So it just gives you a quick overview at the teacher level. Um, there's there's a couple ways in which you can uh, sign off. So you can see that I have a couple here. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of subjects. So you wouldn't have them all. You don't, Again, you'd only have the subjects that um, you have available um, to you. So what that means is uh, the teacher sign off is uh, an indication to your school administrator that you are you are kind of done your reports. Some people uh, kind of um, in the fall, um, if you were part of this and this is a review for you, you communicated to your principal that you were um, done by email or if you were brick and mortar, walked by and said, I'm ready for review. They give you feedback um, and then you uh, made those corrections and then you click uh, teacher sign off. So in a lot of people's mind in the system, it encompasses mine. It's kind of uh, a last part of the process, but some administrators as um, have indicated to um, their team that, you know what, click teacher sign off, then I'll give you the feedback. And then you communicate to me that you are, are that you are done your corrections. So then I can sign off on the principal later on. So either way, even though we're kind of envisioning our compass envisions that the teacher sign off means you're done done as a, as a teacher for that subject. Um, we know that uh, as long as it, uh, the reports and the marks get uh, entered and that uh, corrections uh, are made based on feedback uh, from the admin, if there are any, that uh, this is is something that you would need to do. And on the, the principal end of thing, if they have a similar view um, that that looks like this and it would be grayed out because and it would show them that you had uh, clicked teacher sign off. There is a different way um, that we found successful um, as a teacher when we, and this is again, one to six, you click on review by class. When I mentioned those uh, thermometer type of uh, um, views were not uh, very indicative of what was there. This gives you a, um, an ability to toggle through the class and the subject that you are and the reporting period. And I can uh, scroll down to see the comments, the marks, and I can even edit in here if I wanted to um, based on this. This isn't necessarily the input feature, but if I do notice something, I can fix it off in here and go through here. Um, based on some of those, those uh, comments as well. And I can, if it wasn't already signed off, I could sign off at the top of this, uh, this page as well. If you do like the workflow of looking at all your students at once, um, you can click on review by student. And uh, in that piece, uh, that's something that you could be helpful in, in looking at as well. So review by student. And I have a lot of students in here as you would, and you can see that this is EB. I can toggle between all my students and then I can see there's dance, here's math, here's drama, here's language. So I could see a snapshot of a, of a student all in one place. That feature request is what we're looking for, um, the toggle for kindergarten, but you kind of do see it in your four frame approach, uh, toggle between the student already. So it's these overview components and uh, uh, the ability to sign off currently is not there at the JKSK level because in JKSK, you will see that at that top, um, you do not see it up at the top right now as you toggle through. So in terms of sign off, JKSK is not there yet. So the admin will have to know that in communication with their uh, with your staff. And then for um, for one to six, the sign off is there. There's another place that we would look for, and you can see in the kindergarten here, some people like to see their uh, success. Uh, so it says report card preview. You can see all student or current students. So in this case, um, there would be some text. And again, because it's updated, I'm just going to put uh, text. Or maybe if I still have some copy and paste, it's not going to be accurate, but I just want to um, just put some text in there so we can see it's not accurate. It's not representative of kindergarten. I do apologize to our, our kindergarten teachers on there. I'm going to go back and go back to there so you can see that it is in there. And when I go to report card preview, I can see current student or all students. I'm gonna to go to current student and it should load up um, in this case uh, based on uh, the, the template and you should be able to see it in that moment to give you another little bit of uh, um, you know reassurance and, and progress and pats on the back for all the hard work that uh, you're doing. And so you could print it and print means it goes to PDF. But in this case, if you just want to see it, there's a preview box that pops up and it does take a little bit more uh, time for that, to, for that to occur. 
And if I want to do that at the um, one to six level, so this was the kindergarten level, um, this is where I was, report card export. You can see that I don't have that option um, right now. But if I go under reports, so I've gone the next one up, this is grade one to six. Up on the left hand side, this is a busy screen. Um, you'll learn more about what it is kind of showing to you. Up on the left hand side, you can see that this is my class. So I'm in grade three. Um, right now, I'm just going to show one. So that's one student. And here's that report card preview for that one student. I'm going to click on report card preview. Same thing. It's popping up. And you can see that um, I just have for that one student, um, there's the example that I gave uh, from from before. So just the one student, but you could do that for your whole class if you wanted to preview it and or later on for um, for like OSRs and stuff. This is how you would go to report card preview either individually um, or as a collective class. It will take a bit longer there and the preview will eventually pop up. But if you needed to download them in PDF for the purposes of printing, then you would click on print and save this, um, uh, save all those files to, um, and here you can download it as well. So I'm going to click on cancel. You could download it from the preview to your um, device, and then um, that's a PDF file. So I think um, we're kind of where I'm just checking my notes to make sure I haven't, I mean, there's lots of stuff in Compass, but in terms of what you need to do there. Um, so question um, about logging out of Chrome. No, you don't necessarily need to log out of Chrome. Um, I will show you um, how to update it, but I don't think we need to log out of Chrome. I definitely, if you're if you're sharing a device you um, with um, with a spouse or uh, at any point, or you have your children log in, I definitely would recommend them going into their own Chrome profile. But in terms of logging out of Chrome each time, I'd say, no, you definitely don't have to. But um, if you are sharing the device at any point, it's always uh, good to add different profiles, but not log in and out of Google in that in that component. Um, if I wanted to update Chrome, um, if that's uh, connected to the question, the, the three dots, I, it, a lot of times it should just update with a little arrow. I go to settings under the three dots. And then on the left hand side, it says about Chrome very down here and then up there it says checking for updates it's updating google chrome that's great and then um i would definitely close down chrome after this um and then uh, when you say log out of google chrome um definitely you should close the browser and definitely we should reset our devices a lot but we don't necessarily have to log out of google chrome but we should close the chrome browser and we should log off the device and reset it um, fairly often daily if so All right. So at that point, I'm going to kind of say um, thank you, but I will stay on for questions for a few moments here. Um, so I think that uh, once you kind of get in and you see what you need to see, uh, feedback is that um, the program serves us well. So uh, again, put in a help desk ticket if you um, haven't. Uh, otherwise, I want to thank you for your time. And uh, we do have Compass office hours on Thursday morning this week and some LT office hours. And we're hopeful for um, the PD day to be, um, if you reach out to to us, we're able to uh, provide um, some support on the on the PD day, even though that's your writing day. But you're able to, um, uh, Tara Potter and myself uh, do are taking the lead at Compass within the LT department um, from that piece. But if it's access, definitely make sure that you get that help desk ticket in. Thanks, everybody. I'm glad that you were able to take your time to uh, to be part of the session today. So uh, thanks so much, and have have a wonderful day.